Metal Slug. Metal Slug. Mission one. Start. When recommending great titles from the 2D run and gun action genre, usually two franchises come to mind Contra or Metal Slug. While the Contra series prides itself on semi-realistic graphics, soundtracks reminiscent of big action movies, gameplay dependent on recognizing patterns through boss attacks and whatnot, and of course, Nerves of Steel, the Metal Slug series claim the fame is its 2D high quality animation, sometimes comedic mixed with serious elements for its stages, and insanely hectic battles with bullets and explosions flying everywhere. Although most people will say that Metal Slug 3 is the epitome of Metal Slug greatness, I still have a fondness for the original Metal Slug. At its base, it's some of the most purest 2D action you can find, and it's not overly complicated with this weapon system or just enemy attacks throwing lasers and whatnot at you at every turn. And a little bit more on the base simplicity of the first Metal Slug, you only have a few weapons to choose from, but each has its own place. You have your simple sidearm, the heavy machine gun, the rocket launcher, the flame shot, and the shotgun. When using any of these extra power-up weapons, you really don't feel like you're at a disadvantage, like with future titles, or at least in my opinion, when using the Iron Lizard or the Drop Shot. Most of the time, you can devastate any enemy or any boss with any of these weapons with no trouble whatsoever. So you don't have to feel like you made a mistake when you collect the wrong power-up or you grab something that you might not have used before, because you'll be right at home with any weapon that you pick up. Now, without going further into more gameplay information, I just want to touch on the soundtrack for a second. I've already said I'm a pretty big soundtrack nut when it comes to video games, and I've got to say that Metal Slug 1 has one of those jazziest, catchiest soundtracks for an action running gun I've ever seen. Most of the time these games have metal and electronic elements infused in their soundtracks, which I don't have any issue with, but just the uniqueness of Metal Slug 1 soundtrack puts it above the rest of the game for me. Thank you. 
Getting back into the gameplay, as you've already seen, power-ups are obtained by rescuing the different hostages strewn throughout the stages. Although those aren't the only items you can pick up, they're the only items that really serve as helping you to be able to defeat your enemies. The rest of the bonus items that can be found throughout the different levels only serve to increase your score, which does help in the long run because it'll let you earn extra one-ups or credits. While your main character will die if they get hit one time, which is pretty common with most run and gun titles, the titular metal slug vehicle allows you to take multiple hits, and you can also pick up gas power-ups to replenish your health. Holding on to the metal slug and making it through a boss stage also nets you a bonus at the end of the boss, but that's part of the challenge as you can get overly confident with your metal slug and often waste it within no time whatsoever. I really like that Nazca Corp went with a really high quality 2D animation style for their Metal Slug series. It clearly takes full advantage of the Neo Geo's power, and they also add lots of little details into every single animation or even background things for the stages. Little details like animals running by in the background, characters breathing out cold breath, the death animations are really detailed, and even the waiting animations when your main characters stand around for a few seconds. They begin shouting in the walkie-talkies as if barking orders to distant squad members. It just really shows how much they care to put all these little small details into their game. Another unique element of Metal Slug 1's mechanical design and stage art style is that all the enemy bases that you assault seem to be cobbled together from the debris of a larger battle that might have taken place before the events of Metal Slug 1. This of course gives a last ditch effort on both sides feeling, from the player's side sending in a solo agent to destroy the rest of the rebel army, to the rebel army themselves using whatever means they can to try to maintain their presence. Back to the bosses and enemy patterns. Although Contra does have more observable enemy patterns, the Metal Slug does have them as well. It's more about reflexes, as oftentimes the enemy attacks within their patterns will be so fast and furious within different sets, you'll have to react within a moment's notice to be able to dodge and attack efficiently. I truly feel that Metal Slug 1 is a great entry step point for anyone trying to get into the run and gun action genre. 
support if you want to get into the Metal Slug series as well. A lot of people will say that Metal Slug 3 is pretty much the only Metal Slug you need to play if you haven't played any of the other games. But I think it's great for people to find out where the series got its start. Not too hard difficulty wise. And the gameplay mechanics are pretty easy to learn at any rate. Also, it's widely available to gain access to. You can play it on the Sega Saturn, PS1, various retro game collections for the Wii, the PS2, the Xbox Live Arcade, and I believe there's also a Steam release for the PC. Of course, you can also go the authentic route if you want to, and just grab an AES cartridge, which probably is way out of most people's price range. Or if you have a CMVS, or consoleized MVS system, you can also grab a regular arcade cartridge and have the arcade feel just at home. Either way, there's many ways to gain access to Metal Slug 1, and it's a great option for anyone trying to get into the run and gun gameplay genre, or anyone that just wants a new game and they're already familiar with said genre. Mission complete.